okay hello guys i welcome you to the channel nota bin attack on tube and in this video i'm going to share the beginning of our journey towards uh, understanding the core concepts related to developing an aircraft and uh, just on a theoretical level when uh, getting uh, some of uh, the experienced and more advanced uh, versions of uh, different understanding and concepts and uh, the starting point would be uh, the link which is in front of us which is an app uh, tell online which is all about uh, the aircrafts and stability and control and that uh, document is written by professor ak hosh uh, iit kanpur and uh, this document is uh, of uh, the indian uh, it uh, institute and which is of Kanpur and uh, I'm going to read out the first it, it is all about the details in this link you can have uh, the link on uh, uh, it is all about the professor A.K. Bush and uh, all the details about uh, his work his publications his projects and uh, this is the personal uh, profile and I want to have the introductory session of uh, the actually course instructor and uh, this course which is aircraft stability and control is uh, designed to understand stability and control aspects of an airplane and this course will also help in creating a background to design an airplane from stability and control aspects so this is a uh, faculty of uh, airspace engineering department of iit kanpur he is also the in charge of the flight laboratory and unmanned aerial vehicle of iit kanpur his research areas include system identification through flight test using conventional and neural network based methods design of aircrafts and airborne projectiles super uh, cavitation unmanned aerial systems before joining iit kanpur he worked as a scientist with different uh, with defense research development organization he has uh, published many peer reviewed journal papers and conference papers guided 13 doctoral students and 38 master students he is also a mentor of multiple airspace uh, aerospace startup companies and also been associated with major industry contributions of high speed low drag aircraft bomb panica mk mk1 105 mm uh, sabot round for tracked vehicles so this is uh, the the guy and the professor is one of uh, uh, a very very effective and very experienced source of knowledge uh, towards getting an understanding of how to build an aircraft uh, in terms of stability and control and my uh, is uh, my first uh, video towards this would be of uh, professor uh, A.G. Roche and I'm going to actually download the introduction in the transcript as well and hope to share you uh, the details of that lecture one what is all about and uh, later we can I have opened Google beside as in a second split screen just for in case if we are actually getting some of the terms which we are want to have the clarification we can have the clarification as Google uh, the first hand source of uh, authentication and uh, aircraft stability and control professor A.K. Ghosh Department of Aerospace Engineering Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur lecture one is introduction wish uh, you all well very happy new year we all are the uh, atomic of light laboratory airship and uh, you could see i am surrounded by so many aircraft it is one of uh, the lecture which has been uh, obviously produced uh, in the field uh, with uh, having different uh, i believe with at least uh, more than one aircraft so that he can uh, dem demonstrate it uh, uh, practically uh, over the field so that is why it is just the transcript or the is uh, from that uh, video so what uh, is the important point where we can want to have it So let's see, I'll start up with this and 
and introduce all the ACAF to you because I do not know really how many students have been on this first course which is the prerequisite for second course that is on stability and control. Let me explain you whatever ACAF we have with the specific impetus on the com components which uh, could uh, which would be useful, very very useful for stability and control understanding. This is Cessna 206 airplane and uh, here you could see the wing is again a high wing configuration and these are the uh, struts to support the wing and in performance course you know what is the propeller is meant for. The propeller has a unique role to give uh, power, extract power from the brake but in performance also we decided that we understood that we were precise that wing is meant for giving lift it has nothing to do with stability because you assume that in performance analysis that aircraft is most uh, statically and dynamically stable okay so this is the one one of the because the wing is used for giving uh, is nothing to do with the the stability it is meant for giving the lift okay so the uh, sample airplane is uh, taken uh, by the professor is Cessna 206 and uh, wing is high wing configuration these are the struts to support the wing and in performance course you know that is this propeller is meant for so in performance course we are uh, more bothered about what is the lift generated by the wing what is the drag generated by all the components and we primarily aiming towards an l an l by d which is a maximum right okay now but in this course we will be talking about stability and control so our focus will suddenly go towards this portion which is called horizontal tail this is complete horizontal tail and this horizontal tail will be seen and will be understand now that this is a primary responsible to give the longitudinal stability yes the horizontal tail is the uh, has the role of uh, giving uh, the primary uh, uh, longitudinal stability and we could see the part of this uh, horizontal tail can move up and down and this is called elevator okay and I'll show you with some of uh, the uh, let me have you the horizontal tail image in front of you as well so this is the horizontal tail yep this is exactly the horizontal tail and uh, we want to have the uh, horizontal tail is in front of us okay and uh, can move up and down and this is called elevator okay elevator image elevator image for the for aircraft so this is the horizontal stable uh, stabilizer and this is the elevator which is at the back end so this is how it it, has, it provides the longitudinal stability and as we could see the part of this uh, horizontal can move up and down yes you can move up and down and this is called elevator it, is, it, has, it also has a trimmer which goes up and down in the opposite direction and we will discuss about uh, what is the trim tabs we will be doing so that would be what elevator and up and down the opposite direction we will discuss about the trimmer let's see about the trimmer and uh, trimmer you yeah, not not that trimmer actually it's a uh, it's the trimmer trimmer in elevator so what would be the image yes this is more likely the image elevators in the neutral position and up position of the elevator is acquired to point the rows in the level feel uh, and uh, this one is also there elevator trimmer yes this is all about uh, the whole understanding so 
this is complete horizontal tail and this horizontal tail will be seen when we will understand now that this is primarily responsible to give the longitudinal stability okay and we could see the part of this horizontal tail can move up and down and this is called elevator yes this is which we can use it and uh, most important thing uh, to understand this total area both side together is responsible to give both static and dynamic stability in the longitudinal plane and part of it which is called elevator responsible to give the longitudinal control that is if i want to move the aeroplane up and down i will be using this elevator okay that is perfectly uh, fine i can move the elevator up and down and uh, giving it as an stability uh, both in terms of static and dynamic as well so similarly it has a trim tab so you see here trim tab in elevator so trim tab how do elevator trim tab this is the trim tab that is the elevator that is uh, the elevator altogether the back end uh, Yes, and also this is the elevator trim trim an aircraft and hold the control yoke okay this is about controlling it elevator trim control it this is the elevator and similarly it has a trim tab you see here I do not know whether it's visible to you or not a small portion which is required to use at the end uh, so that pilot can fly uh, hands off we will uh, talk about that okay similarly if you see here this is a vertical tail which gives you stability in terms of directional and lateral mo motion a part of this is called a rudder so which can be moved either way to turn the air airplane this way or that way so that is the rudder control so let's see what is the rudder and uh, rudder is this one and it's a vertical stable stabilizer which is the rudder okay that is just at the back of that uh, vertical stabilizer okay and uh, these are the horizontal stabilizer the back of end is at the trim and uh, it is the elevator and with the elevator trim and this is the vertical stabilizer with what with rudder in it so these are the back end this is the tail concept that we are telling you and uh, actually professor has explained quite well and so that is the rudder control so we have now elevator control rudder control and now we will go for the uh, aileron aileron let's see what is aileron aileron control our aileron's are what let's see Ailerons, ailerons control system and this is the ailerons let me go to some other detail aileron control okay yes that is the center point of that whole airplane is the ailerons control so this is now we will go for the aileron what is the role of the elevator if you want to pitch like up and down like this we will be using elevator so it is the elevator control understandable you have to use up and down if you want to move the airplane in this direction then this is the rudder okay okay we if we want to move uh, if you want to move the airplane in this direction uh, then this is the rudder uh, so rudder control okay okay rudder is actually on the vertical stabilizer and elevator is on the horizontal stabilizer and obviously it, it, the both will move uh, simultaneously as per the direction of the elevator so that would be the elevator control and the rudder control will going to uh, be moving accordingly to the according as per the elevator control if i want to move the aeroplane in this direction then this is the rudder control if we want to roll the aeroplane or bang the aeroplane like this then this control is called uh, aileron okay so when we want to roll the aeroplane then that the center part would take place this is the aileron and that would be the effective aileron controls the three controls the elevator control the rudder control and the aileron control work 
uh, as per the direction and it is up down and also it is for the banging and also for the rolling so these are the different types of directions and the, all the three controllers will move accordingly so if i want move it down like this you could see as if it goes forward force will be acting upward and it will giving a lift left wing will go down okay so if i move it down like this you could see as it goes forward force will be acting upward and it will give a, a left wing a, a give the left wing will be will go down similarly if i put it uh, like uh, this other thing it will bang like this so this is called aileron so will be hang uh, up on that side so you can move it together you can move it different uh, differentially so this is called aileron or aileron control okay fine fine so we have now three primary control one is elevator i've discussed for a longitudinal control rudder for the directional control and aileron for roll control or lateral control these are the primary three control surfaces we will be using and when you define everything about stability we will also try to see how this control of forces or moment generated gives a response vis a vis the stability characteristics of the aeroplane this will be total part of this one of the module of this course and i will be uh, flying the cessna 206 with my pilot my, my, with my pilot and also give you live uh, demonstration of what is the meaning of static stability or dynamic stability in flight that is a practical work but obviously we are going through the practical uh, uh, portion and it would be uh, frankly speaking a very detailed one this is our uh, Hessen, uh, Hansa 3 aircraft I will be walking down to Hansa 3 aircraft which is our nation's flight one of our finest lightweight aircraft you could see that if I compare Cessna 206 and Hansa 3 you could see this wing is a low wing a high wing configuration so from stability control point of view this thing will have implication that is why I am stressing you keep, please keep uh, back of your mind Cessna 206 which I showed you just now as a high wing configuration and this is the low wing configuration okay similarly we uh, have this is uh, the we have this is the sinus manufactured by a uh, Pipistrel. This is called motor glider. Motor glider uh, because uh, conventionally gliders were launched by cable winch combination, right? It is like flying a kite. But nowadays we find the gliders. Gliders mean high glide ratio, right? So that they can later or longer duration, uh, but need to take off. So instead of cable, uh, which what has been done, a small engine has been put. So what's the? Let's see what is about the gliders let's see what are the gliders so glider is this one okay okay these are the gliders okay these are all the different um, actually version of uh, the airplane that as well let me see the pipistrel and pipistrel glider so that is the pipistrel draw self launch glider okay good one that is even one of the starting point as well for study but we will be just looking different models different uh, versions of models and we're going to take from that as a collective understanding the motor glider is in front of us pipistrel motor glider let's see what it tells us about PPS sinus aircraft glider okay so this is used for takeoff once you go to a particular uh, particular altitude you switch on the engine there are gliders where the whole propeller will go inside so that you have very good l by d configuration l by d is uh, i believe is l by d configuration L by D ratio aircraft and that would be let's see yes this is the lift to drag ratio 
lift this and drag this okay high ld high efficiency long range high ld large payload and low fuel usage okay so this is the usage of it. this one let's see is a lift to drag ratio when you're going to lift up it would be there would be low dragging high lift means uh, uh, low dragging and high efficiency and that will be the long range and uh, large payload and low fuel is okay when you have uh, the large lift that will be a low fuel usage understandable and now what we're going to do this is also been explained by using this geometrical uh, sketch as well and it's been lift and drag horizontal against vertical it's the horizontal portion and that is the flight path the lifting okay the drag is at the angle of 90 the horizontal distance and the vertical height okay horizontal distance and vertical height and uh, you take the distance into height horizontal distance into height and that would be the ratio the lift divided by drag that would be the ratio the higher uh, the ratio the higher the efficiency the lower the fuel usage that is the point okay uh, okay so use uh, once you get a proper patulator you, you switch on the engine here are gliders where the whole propeller will go inside so that you have a very good L by D configuration you can fly and when you find that it has come down to a low altitude you will start the engine and go to another altitude, uh, altitude and fly so you have a very large endurance from that perspective and that is also the talking about the range the payload as well so the glide this glider if you use a uh, C also has high wing configuration from stability and control point of view you uh, you please note down that this is a there is a there is a must be some requirement to have a high wing configuration sometime low wing configuration and primarily uh, from stability and control point of view sometime it could be because of maintenance point of view also so we will be talking about this uh, thing in detail okay and uh, since I'm talking about the gliders, I have talked about Hansa, Hansa 3. The speeds are less than around less than 1.3 Mac. So Hansa, Hansa 3 is this one. Hansa 3 model is this one. And also, what is uh, the ma what is I believe Mac uh, point three speed of sound? Okay. This is the speed of around less than speed of sound. You can see that this is uh, the, these are the aileron, which by now you could uh, you know that these are used to give a bang to the aeroplane. And aeroplane can be rotated like this to this aileron, and this be with this uh, this is also one of the control. Like we have elevator, we have rudder, and we have aileron. Yes, I have uh, taken that point. So the gliders will be helpful in taking the sound of uh, the speed of what. Uh, uh, it will take uh, the uh, speed, the sound, and also it will control it accordingly. Uh, uh, and the controller would be aileron, and uh, just for rotating and banging. These are extremely important to understand because please understand in this course we are not going to talk in terms of performance. okay so it is point three you could use this these are the aileron which one are you know okay these are extremely important to un understand because please understand this course we are not going to talk in terms of performance we are going to talk in terms of stability and control absolutely understandable so, professor 
and uh, let's say hypothetically so if uh, this wing sees some angle of attack its lift force I can represent at the quarter choid point so this force will give a nose up moment what is the quarter odd point Twenty five chord position or aerodynamic center is used about which the forces and movements are generated for systematic air foils in subsonic flight the aerodynamic center is located approximately twenty five percent of the chord from the leading edge of the air foil. This point is described as quarter code point. Let me have the image as well because I just want to have the image then I'll be able to actually keep it as an in my way, as in photographic memory as in uh, direction of uh, flight that is the quarter code okay okay direction of flight is this this is the quarter code okay Okay, nose up moment. As the angle of attack will increase, this will give nose up moment. That means with the increase of angle of attack, this wing will uh, contribute towards the stability. It will further take the aircraft up. But if you see uh, the tail, uh, since is, uh, CG is here, which is center of gravity is there. If there is this change in angle of attack, then there will be have a force in this direction. And uh, that will give a nose down moment. So we'll try to reduce the angle of attack if there is at at all given through a distance right angle of attack angle of attack okay this is the angle of attack yes horizontal plane okay platform angle of attack okay I got it this is the angle of attack this wing will contribute towards the stability it will further take the aircraft up but if you see the tail since uh, center of gravity is there if there is a change in angle of attack then they will have a force in this direction this will give a nose down moment so we'll try to reduce the angle of attack if there is at a if there is at all given through a distance right so this uh, we will be talking it has uh, some sort of stabili stabilizing effect all these things will be uh, uh, we will be discussing and in general we find uh, that any component which is located ahead of center of gravity will give destabilizing effect any component which is behind center of gravity will give stabilizing effect okay good so this is in general we need to understand that in a plane and that we will be talking in detail and formulating and try to see how I can understand these characteristics and configure an airplane with the uh, adequate well planned and designed stability characteristics right this is the basic purpose of this course. So we were talking about uh, subsonic or low speed aircraft now in this course as far as stability and control are concerned we will not be restricting ourselves to low speeds we will also go for high speeds so let me introduce one of four and other pride aircraft I have the model of for that aircraft and you might also be knowing this is uh, the Tejas so professor is actually in, in this video actually with, uh, with the different models of aircrafts what is Teja? Teja is this one, okay. And uh, uh, we will be restricting ourselves to low speed. We will also be go. We will also go for high speeds. Okay, this is also the. Um, um, I believe the uh, the fighter planes, but. Uh, Okay, I have the model for that aircraft and you also must be knowing that this is Teja, this is the Delta Wing configuration, this is one of our pride Teja subsonic aircraft and because it has Delta Wing, lot of sweep, okay, and you could see control surfaces are led in a different than a different manner than what is in a conventional aircraft a performance when you're talking about sweep. So we are talking in terms of critical Mach number primary to reduce the drag 
However, once the sweep for such high speed airplane is there, we need to discuss about what is the effect of speed on the stability, what is the effect of variation of parameters uh, with, uh, with speed in terms of dynamic stability, and then what is the sweep is going to do as far as stability and control concentration are there. These are the different characteristics, how to handle speed and how to handle the stability. So that is why the stages which I am I'm purposely showing you, I also always love to show our own aircraft. Unfortunately, out of so many aircraft, only two are our own aircraft. I would like this sort of a course should help by youngsters. I held that after 10, 15 years, this I may stay full of aircraft. Okay. With this, uh, with that aspiration, um, okay. So finally, the pilot will fly. He is flying it uh, at ease. Do not forget whatever you decide with the fl with the flight vehicle. If it is a man flight vehicle, we need to be bothered about the human being, the pilot, the passengers. And if you are very very careful about their comfort, if they are not comfortable, then the vehicle is not well designed. Absolutely right. The, the end user, uh, I have actually introduced in my, the first video about the end user is all the, is all is, is all uh, the uh, the judge. If it's if uh, he if the customer is uh, fine enough in using the vehicle, the uh, the, uh, the flight vehicle used by actually man flight vehicle, and if it's the passengers, uh, they all need to be in a comfortable position so they can enjoy uh, the comfort of uh, the vehicle as well without any uh, defect as well as uh, traveling as well as uh, the use of that uh, equipment or that uh, vehicle is concerned as far as from uh, the pilot uh, perspective is concerned so introduction performance we will uh, we are talking about most response of the airplane in terms of translatory motion so you assume that yes we apply newtonian's law that is force equal to motion into uh, acceleration of a central mass okay force is equal to m into a that is absolute so we simplify the whole description to a point mass approximation or point mass model but in this course since we are talking about stability and control we will be talking about totally how the airplane is going in a translatory motion okay this is also very because normally the translatory motion is all about when you are talking about the stability and control uh, the uh, the transition in terms of dynamic uh, stability is very important okay so that is why uh, we have to discuss uh, the uh, translatory motion as well so we will also like to talk about is rotational motion right and the moment something uh, rotation comes your point mass approximation or point mass simplification will not work okay we will also like to talk what about is rotational motion okay and the moment something rotation comes your point mass approximation or point mass simplification will not work okay point mass approximation let's see what it's all about point mass uh, approximation is an approximation whereby dry solid bodies are treated as point masses so to avoid concern about rotational changes in orientation that depend on the geometry of these bodies so let's see what is the point mass approximation in terms of image. Okay. Okay. Point mass approximation of the, these are different uh, equipment and the point mass of different equipment as well. It's not just because point mass uh, of any equipment is possible of any part of equipment is possible that is the point so point mass approximation is an approximation by dry solid body that we did at point masses so to avoid this is all about the you just consider that as a solid body to, to consider the solid body as a point mass and just to avoid the uh, the rotation and, and or the changes in orientation so that will not be the point of discussion so that will just be a one point and point mass approximation will help you to actually uh, 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 actually what you can say uh, you can ignore or actually you can avoid the concerns about rotation or in orientation 
So we'll also talk about is rotation motion, right? And the moment something rotation comes, your point mask approximation or point mass simplification will not work because you know in rotation it is not the total mass, it is the mass distribution or we say it is the moment of inertia that plays a role, okay? At the same time, we will also bother about what is the moment coming on the airplane at a given flight conditions. Okay, this is uh, the taking or taxing to and climb, cruise and lotex and landing. So these, the same you'll also be bothered about. This is the moment coming on the airplane at a given flight condition. Since these are things we have touched upon in last lecture, you so you will find that few of the last lectures will be repeated so that this is a continuity, okay? And why this is important, please understand about after all we have learned by now some important phases of airplane motion and this part was a taxing and take off. This was climb, this was cruise or it could be accelerated flight, this is loiter. But it's not the lotex, it is loiter. Here it is landing. The question we ask uh, to ourselves is, I want to climb, I need to generate particular amount of lift. And once I generate particular amount of lift, how do I generate that? That is, what are the control surface I deflect? And that part is taken care in the topic of control. And the next question comes to our mind. If I deflect the control, it's the elevator, whether the airplane is going to be stable or not uh, or to be more precise more correct how this control deflection will generate a response to an aircraft which is stable the same control input will have a different type of response if the aircraft is not stable right so we need to build a relationship between stability and control in a very tacit manner and we should understand exactly what it means what this relationship is going to give us absolutely right for example, so far as we have assumed for a, uh, that for a cruise, we have to give some elevator deflection. But question is, if I give an elevator deflection, does the airplane immediately come to the angle of attack or they are at transcend, transcends? And if you want to really design an airplane better, you should know clearly about the transcends response. So what is this? Let's see. Okay, so in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, our transient response is the response of a system to a change from an equilibrium or already as a steady state. The transient response is not necessarily tied to abrupt events, but uh, to an any event that affects the equilibrium of the system. Transient response. tied to abrupt even but uh, to any event that affects the equilibrium of the system okay what is the difference between transient steady state only difference is that capacitor okay this is about the electronics we are not we are uh, dealing here with it in terms of the mechanical engineering uh, okay You want to really design an airplane better you should know clearly about the transcendence response okay So that is the part of the stability which is we referred to as dynamic stability okay so in stability we have static and dynamic both okay and by control here we will be primarily meaning this elevator control the aileron it would be rudder there would be canard like this so we will try to understand each of this and try to see how stability and control are connected and uh, how they are connected and why they why, why we are interested in how they are connected because finally we know through their relationship that what is the handling qualities of the airplane because we are more bothered about the pilot and the passenger okay this is the very 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 important point of the paragraph so what will be the whole direction roadmap for this course and we'll be talking about back to our early lectures maybe around 8 to 10 where we will start the introduction the way we used to in that time so that there is continuity okay i will see use man 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 
used uh, too frequently in the first 15 lectures so if we make ensure that we are uh, seamlessly going in, uh, into direction where the continuity is there okay let us go back to this term stability and we uh, and we agreed that we will try to study it through static and dynamic stability okay what is static stability you recall you are clear by now through our first course that every system which is in equilibrium or any system which is in equilibrium and if it uh, disturb, disturb uh disturbed about the about the equilibrium and if had an initial tendency to come back to that equilibrium we say that body is in static equilibrium or the body is statically uh, statically stable we will see the body is statically stable that is precisely more correct appropriate just recall remember we have given this example okay so i have taken half uh, the lecture so i will be discussing the other half from this point onwards and uh, what we have learned we have learned different type of controls different type of ele the elevator with the elevator trim and uh, we have discussed about the vertical stabilizer and we also discuss about uh, the control as well we have discussed about the aileron control as well we have discussed about the static stability and we have what we can provide at all at for at all levels so what we are in a position to actually get an understanding some of the key points will definitely will be revised again but i believe that the first section of this uh, video covering the first eight pages of stability and control in aircraft is a starting point of our journey towards understanding aircraft and designing and also building it in a in more local more uh, standard uh, form so that we can help actually generate a more robust strategy of building an aircraft and understanding our basic and core concepts so if you have any questions whatsoever uh, we will retain these concepts with the help of what first the photographic images and, le and also the formulas and the graphical details and along with that with the definitions as well so that would be the whole point uh, the graphical uh, representation the pictures the photographic memory the definition the formula and uh, would be the our core strengths in actually understanding all about the aircraft and aircraft uh, uh, aircraft uh, understanding so i am going to end up my video here i hope to see you with the, the rest of the lecture covering the rest of the pages and hope to see you with the uh, with some other interesting uh, concepts in this lecture covered by professor ak hosh and i believe that he is a guy who will be actually uh, will be our strength in understanding all the basic and also more advanced concepts so i again thank you mr uh, uh, professor ak hosh and also i thank uh, the department of aerospace engineering iit kanpur and uh, by providing the picture by providing the lectures online over their website so you can visit you might find plenty of other resources as well related to aircraft stability and control so i'll see you in the next video till then thank you very much take care and a nice day